enough of your wood miser nonsense and going on and on about the metric system. We want to see the wood fire forge. All right, let's do it. Before we go any further, I've got to clear a few things up. For all you armchair quarterbacks out there telling me how this is poorly made and how it's unsafe and it's going to be flimsy and then how easy it would be to make something better and boy, if I was going to do it, I would do this and if I was going to do it, I would do that. You know what? The truth of the matter is you didn't do it and you won't do it and you will never do it. The most you can do is sit there and type on that keyboard telling the rest of us and tearing us down and tearing people down who have done something that's really good and done a nice job better than you'll ever do. So unless you have built one or made the plans or have used one and you can produce a video or a picture stating as much, then please keep your comments to yourself because they carry no weight with those of us who actually do things in life. So with that nastiness out of the way, we can get to the kinder, gentler portion of the broadcast. And that is, let's see if we can forge with this thing. I've been wanting to do it, I just haven't been able to. I hate to keep you waiting. So what do we have here? We got, we got the divider in the center. We'll have just kind of a, we'll use half the forge. We have a medium, we have a medium fire there. So we'll turn our, our dialerator down here. So what we got? Turn it to like the five and that'll open up all these airs, clo close over here. Wood-wise, so I went on the, uh, the Whitlock's website and they said that uh, a soft wood like a fir here works really good and the ideal dimension is about two inches by six inches. Well, I just had loose ends, like this is what most of us are gonna have. These are just you know, remnants and cutoffs from projects and two by fours and such and little things, some have bark, some don't, but they're, one thing they do have in common is they're all dry, they're very dry. Actually, that one's not. The rest of them are dry. So let's, uh, let's see, let's see how it goes. Let's get a fire started. We'll get by with a little help from our map gas here. Remember, it's modern homesteading. We could do flint and steel, but uh, well, we're just not gonna do that today. Let's just jump in there. So we'll just put some, uh, put some small pieces. Man, is it hot today. It is so hot. The fire, my strike team leader, Wildland Fire, that I like to go out with, Will, he sent me a text and said, uh, pack your bags, have everything ready. It's a red flag warning, meaning extreme fire danger. We've got a hain index of six, and highly, highly, I mean, it's perfect condition for Wildland Fire. So everyone seems to be on a Wildland Fire except for me. But that's all right, because I can be here making my own fire. So let's, I bet it won't take long in this dry, dry weather to get this thing going. Nothing like getting a good hot ripping fire in a blacksmith forge on a 104 degree day. So the fire's been burning here on its own for about three minutes or so. Um, remember, I'm not the expert on this. I've never even done it before. We're doing this together for the first time. So this may not be the best way to do it. But from what I understand, what we need to do is we, we need to have a, we're trying to make charcoal. Charcoal here's what we're trying to do. And so what we want is we want a good bed of charcoal over the, over the fire. So we want charcoal above and below what we're trying to heat. So let's put a little air on here and see what that, that does. That definitely intensifies the fire. I could feel quite a bit of heat coming off of it. I got a little greedy with that wood getting it started. I'm gonna throw some smaller stuff in there to get it help get it going. Oh, it's ripping now. Yeah, you start with a little bit smaller pieces there, just like a normal fire. You don't need to throw those big blocks. Oh yeah, it's getting hot now. Pump them back up a little bit. That's, that's it in Africa hot there. So the fire's been burning for about five minutes or so. So it's starting to burn down and throw a few little more little pieces on there. It's definitely getting hot. So the thing I really dig about this is, is using the scraps of wood. This is stuff that I usually just throw in the stove or throw out in the burn pile. I sweep it up, throw it in the garbage can. 
and not having to buy that coal, I, I never, it was always a barrier to me, blacksmithing, when I had to buy that coal, it was expensive, you know, varied, but anywhere from like $25 to $30 for a bag, and it didn't last very long. Not to mention the acrid smoke that comes off of it, and I feel like it's killing me, and the, the, the sulfur and all that stuff. This is a, a hot fire, there isn't, I've got it burning inside my shop, there's no smoke to speak of. I mean, just a tiny little bit, but as it gets really hot, there's gonna be less and less. Plus, it's, it's a fuel that's coming from the homestead that's just renewable, that doesn't cost anything, and it's, it's wonderful. I mean, you can't hardly put a price on just the satisfaction that comes from that independence, like the independence you get from growing your own food, or the independence you get from having a ram pump supply your water. You know, it's all the same type of thing. It's, it's, it, you can't put a value on it. It's just, it, here's what it's like. You got an off-grid home, there's an ice storm, everyone's power's out for a week, and you're, uh, you don't even know there's a storm because you have, you have, you have the system. You're making your own power, you know? It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling. So I've been cranking on this thing for about 10 minutes or so, and it's hot. It's, it's really hot, just a nice moderate stroke like that. Um, so yeah, 10 minutes, that's, that's less than what I would have getting the coal fire ready. So what I'm gonna do is, is I think we wanna kinda stir, oops, stir that around a little bit, make sure we got a good even coal bed on the, on the bottom. I'm gonna keep you in frame there. And so we want those long pieces to kinda hang on the side there. You know, there's gonna be a learning curve here. And that wedge, that shape, that wedge shape is gonna cut, force everything down uh, in the bottom. But I think we're about ready, so let's uh, watch this. The intensity of that heat, it's hard to describe. I'm backing up, I'm reaching out as far as I can here because it's so hot. Yeah, it's, re it's, re it's really hot. Let's put a piece of steel in there and uh, see what happens. All right, I think we got a good bit of charcoals right here. So I got Jack's old, his old uh, spoon here, the first one that he made. Man, the image quality. I'm looking at the viewfinder and this new camera is just stunning. Stunning, okay, so let's put that in there and see. You know, we want a little bit of wood below, above and below, right? Looks like I might be getting burnt down a little bit. We'll throw a couple in there. It's hot, definitely hot. Let's uh, blow it up here. All right, so I stuck that in there and I gave the uh, I gave the old about 25 twisteroos there on the blower. Just poked it in there. Let's see, where are you here? Where are you? Look at that. I can get a fo focus on that there. That's hot. That's hot right there. All right, so let's stick it in one more time there. And uh, we'll give it a little bit more and see what happens here. That's, got, that's on your scrap wood, guys. That's on your scrap wood right there. How about that? Look at that, and I got a nice charcoal bed in there. Good fire. I still don't think it's quite, quite ready. Could use a little bit more on there, but that'll work. Let's get something, let's put one more piece in there. Let's put a piece of that, you know that, that big flat bar, see how that does. All right, so we'll take out this We'll take out this divider because we got a long piece. That, well, oh, that piece, you know, that steel we're going to use for the um, to, to wrap the stump, the anvil deal, right? So we'll we'll put this is big. This is two inch, two inch by what is it? Two inch by quarter, qu quarter thick, right? That's a big old chunk of metal right there. We'll put a uh, put a few blocks on top, right? These are that wedge shape, right? It's going down in there. All right, let's see what it does. Let's put one more on there. Bear with me here, we're learning. We're learning together. All right, so I've been blow, running that blower for about a minute or so. We'll take this out of here and see. I can bend it just with my hand. 
no problem. So what's my takeaway from this? Delightful to use, absolutely stable, great ergonomics, easy to use, perfect height, the pass through, having the ability to pass through there uh, and do long pieces. I can't even, I can't see any conceivable uh, time where I would ever go back to the cold brake drum forge. As a matter of fact, when it gets convenient and after I've really proven this, uh, but I have no doubt that I'll just get rid of that altogether because it just doesn't make any sense. For what I need to do, just doing hobby stuff and, and not being a, a professional, that this is a wonderful forge. And uh, I am a little sensitive to all of the negativity about this from people that have never used it. They've never met the Whitlocks. They don't know what a wonderful family they are. They don't know what a great product and how, how much value you get with this is. They don't know anything. And to, to roll on and, and to make all these grandiose statements about what they're going to do, it, it's insulting. And it's just, I checked myself there. It's just, um, it's just irrelevant. It's just irrelevant. It's a, a wonderful product. It's a wonderful forge. Good job, Whitlocks. And uh, I am really looking forward to, to getting to know it and to be able to, uh, to use it better and, and to learn and, and to learn the trade of blacksmithing uh, very much. It's just uh, not so much on a hot day like today. So I know I want to get the barrel rings done too, uh, but it's not going to happen right now. It's just too too hot. So we'll see you guys on the, on the next video. Oh, one last thing I wanted to show you. So check this out. So we've got a hot fire in there, hot enough to, to, to melt steel, right? But on the outside, a painted surface, it's hot. You know, it's 120, 150, maybe 125 degrees or so. I could, can't rest my hand on it, but it's, uh, that's pretty good insulation, huh?